they at least half of their people do vote in the office. But that's, you know, if we can ever get it where you can internet, internet vote or have just what they call the, po the voting places or stations where anybody can go vote in any of them, it'll make it so much better on everything. It's just we're working towards that. Let me, let me say also, uh, my parents, sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, my parents were, are elderly, it's just my dad now, and he can drive, he can get around, but they've done absentee voting for a number of years, and one thing that that allows them to do is to study the ballot, to research the candidates, and to take their time instead of going to a touch screen, you know, and standing in line and trying to make those decisions. So absentee, for many people, might be a good option. Well, it was absolutely a nightmare of the last two presidentials. It was absolutely horrible. Yeah. Well, good. There you go. See, that's what we want you to do. I mean, we really do. We, we, voted, we voted over 27,000 people in our office, and it went like clockwork. There was, I mean, the wait was just nothing. It was just, it was amazing how much better it did from the, from the 2008 election, it, how, how better. How, but we're learning, you know, we're learning it too. But we, we you know, we want to address all your, your fears and all, um, but it, it is moving towards where it's going to be a lot easier on, on, on us, I think, in the in the long run. Thank you. Sure. I knew when Deb contacted me, um, she said, could we have some time on the program, that it was going to be really important. Um, so thank you, Susan and Matt, for coming and, and telling us about that. And, and you can see them after also and look at the map. Uh, at this time, I would call for some officers' reports. Dr. Marks with elections. Uh, you've already heard most of what needed to be said about elections uh, this year. This year, there are municipal elections. Uh, qualifying is going to be uh, August 26th to, to 30th. Uh, so it's important for us to be involved and engaged. Uh, I want to take the opportunity at the mic to really thank the folks at the elections office, uh, Deb and Susan and Matt and the, and the crew out there, really do an outstanding job. Uh, I know that when there are problems in other counties, it is Lowndes County, the elections office, that they often call uh, for advice on how to, how to get things to run, run smoothly. So they do re really do a, f a phenomenal job, and, and we appreciate all that of, all of they do. The other thing that I want to mention uh, besides elections are the, are the boards. Uh, you've heard from, uh, from two of them today. Uh, it's a good way to get involved uh, if you don't want to plunge in and run for office uh, to serve on one of these boards. Uh, it's on the boards and commissions that a lot of the, of the hard work gets done. Uh, if you go to a county commission meeting, it, it flies by pretty quickly uh, because, in fact, most of the work has been, has been done uh, either on the, on the boards and commissions or in staff. Uh, so it is really, really important to be involved uh, in these boards, and it's a good opportunity. It's, if you live in the city, it's easy to apply. Just go to the city website. If you live in the county... My secret advice is to go to the city website and find out what's open, uh, and then go ahead and apply to the, apply to the county. Uh, yes, John. Uh, that, is, that is correct. It's a city, a city appointment or a county, county appointment. Uh, but there, I don't believe there's a residency requirement on the boards and commissions. Uh, and so those are the those are the things for for this year. And then again, uh, remember the last last day to vote is uh, November the November the fifth, and that's a that's an easy day to remember. It's my birthday. 
We have a rare opportunity here. Um, one of our um, vice chairs serves on a board and commissions that meets at the same time as this meeting, and he serves on historic preservation. Uh, Dr. Richard Sager is our qualifying chairman. So, Dr. Sager, could you come and talk to us a little bit about qualifying, please? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm qualified to say a few words about qualifying. Uh, as was pointed out by uh, Dennis and, and also Susan, uh, this is an odd-numbered year, and in odd-numbered years, we, we primarily have municipal elections. Uh, municipal elections in Georgia are, for the most part, nonpartisan elections, and so you might ask, what is the role of the Democratic Party in a nonpartisan election? I can recall several years ago, following one of those nonpartisan elections, picking up the Valdos Daily Times on a Wednesday morning and seeing the headlines that read, Republicans sweep city council races. And, um, and I said, that can't be. These are nonpartisan elections. So what is our role? Well, essentially, our role, I think, is to make sure that we have candidates who share our philosophy. And, um, we want candidates who are not necessarily Democrats, but who share the Democratic philosophy. And so to that end, what we try to do is to encourage people to, to run for office. Uh, so far, I've been approached by, by two people who are planning to run for uh, District 2, the City Council. Um, two Democrats, two people who I think would be very worthy uh, candidates and worthy opponents, and one uh, from for District 6. Um, and the person that I spoke to from District 6 is, is very interested, is a Democrat, um, and I promised him the, the full, my full support anyway, and I was certain that, uh, the, that you all would probably be interested in supporting him as well. Um, I'm not at liberty at this point to mention that person's name. He's still mulling it over, uh, but it looks like we will have at least candidates for in, in two of the, the three city council races that are being contested. Uh, the other races, of course, include Mayor of Hayhira and a few other um, no one thus far has, has approached me to ask for any assistance or to ask for information on qualifying. But if they do, I'll be happy to share whatever information I have. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, ahead of this meeting, you might have noticed some of us huddled around the table there. That was um, some semblance of our committee, and the committee is um, what runs this organization. Um, at that time, we had accepted the resignation of our membership chairman, Mr. Wynne Roberson, who's there in the back, um, and we elected a new membership chairman, uh, Dr. Amanda Hall. So, Amanda, uh, come here and introduce yourselves. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm Dr. Amanda Hall. I'm a small animal veterinarian at Bay Tree Animal Hospital, and I have been a resident of Lowndes County since 1990 when I came to VSU. I only left for four years when I uh, attended veterinary school, so I'm looking forward to playing my part of supporting the Democratic Party and doing what I can with the membership chair. Okay, so now it's time for the chairman's report, and I got some little notes I wanted to let you know about. Um, you maybe have read in the paper or heard on the news that the state uh, Democratic Party chairman, Mike Berlon, is um, planning on resigning. Um, his re resignation is going to be effective Sunday, and the executive committee, which is the part of the state committee, which basically runs the party, is going to have a meeting this week. Um, the state party rules say that the executive committee needs to call for an election uh, between 10 and 70 days after the executive, uh, after the resignation of a, uh, an elected member. Um, in the meantime, the first vice chair, Nikema Williams, will act as the chairman of the Democratic Party of Georgia. 
Uh, Laverne Gaskins, who is on our committee, serves as the state secretary. So she's the secretary of the state party, and she's a part of the executive committee at the state level. So she will be representing us at that meeting coming up later this week. Basically, there's a, a process in place for the state committee to elect a new chairman. You know, and there's been a lot of blah, 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 blah in the newspapers and who will it be and, well, basically it'll be we'll follow the rules and the rules say that in order to run for that position, you either have to be a state committee member or you have to get a certain number of signatures for, from state committee members um, and then election will be held. State committee members will gather at some location um, that's available to all state committee members, and they will vote on slips of paper. So we do paper balloting when we do that. Um, our state committee members are myself, Dr. Marks, Linda Ray, and Laverne Gaskins. So if you have some input about what you think's happened at the state committee, the kind of person that you would like us to vote for, let us know because we're your representatives there. Um, but but this will take place over the course of the summer, and um, I'm not too worried about it because we do have this mechanism in place for us to elect a new chairman. Um, coming up this month, um, Jarrell Anderson is going to be spearheading the voter registration at the Juneteenth Festival. So that's on Saturday, June the 22nd, starting at 10 o'clock on the historic courthouse square. If you're interested in helping him with that voter registration, he'll be getting with Susan to um, sign up for it. Um, so let him know that you'll, you'll be available. We'll be doing a voter registration at the 100 Black Men Barbecue, which is on the first weekend in August. Um, and that's a really great place to register voters because everyone's standing in line. They're waiting for barbecue at the next place. So you just go down the line and you ask everybody, are you registered to vote? Have you moved since you voted last? And, and you can get a lot of people that way. It's easy for them. In the meantime, between those two events is our barbecue. Um, uh, this is our major fundraiser for the year. It costs $25 uh, to attend. We will be having um, Wendy Davis, who is one of the national DNC members um, from Georgia. She's one of the Georgia representatives. She will be speaking. Dexter Sharper will be speaking, uh, telling us about the legislative session that, that he just went through as a freshman legislator. Laverne Gaskins will give us an update from the state party, um, talk about what's happening there. Uh, and all of the local candidates who are declared at that time um, will be invited to speak. So if you're um, one of those people who's thinking about running for a local office, you might want to um, let your intention be known before our barbecue because we'll have people there available for you to talk to. Um, let's see. In August, our speaker will be Corey Hull from the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization. He uh, focuses on transportation, and they're doing a transportation survey and uh, master plan right now, and he will be getting our input so do come because he'll have actual questions, I think, for us in addition to doing his presentation. And in September, when we have our meeting, it'll be by the time that the candidates have qualified. So we will have invited all of the candidates to come to our September meeting, all the ones who are actually qualified and are going to be on the ballot. So make sure you come to the September meeting so that you can meet all the candidates. That was a lot of stuff. At this time, um, we open the floor, and I'm going to put a timer on everybody today because we're um, already well past 7 o'clock, to say, if you have something to tell the membership, we are going to have a three-minute limit. Um, so do we have any members who would like to speak to us for three minutes? Oh, our, Dem our Democratic Party chairman from Brooks County, Fanny? Okay. You're going to speak. Okay. You you can come and speak here. Come to the microphone. Thank you. I'm going to put you on the time. Okay. I won't be long. Actually, my my full legal name is uh, Fannie Marie Jackson Gibbs. 
This is my 60th year, thank God I made it. Uh, I lived half my life, Lowndes County, half my life, Brooks County. 2009, I returned to Brooks County, and that's why I'm active in Brooks County. However, I'm here this evening on behalf of the Kendrick K.J. Johnson Justice Movement <coughs> to update you on our progress, give you some numbers and resources if you want to follow this situation. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Barbara English, the grandmother, are here with me. If you want to find out the true facts, what's happening in this case, Mr. Johnson's number is 229-412-6011. Mrs. Johnson's number is 229-699-3314. We have one web page, Justice for Kendrick Johnson, and another one, Jackie Johnson. Those are the only two official web pages for the justice movement. You will find lots of garbage and filth on the cesspool called the internet. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you, you're aware of it, but uh, Patrick Davis at examiner.com basically follows our situation. If you want to get an update on what's happening with that movement, check out Patrick Davis on examiner.com or Victor Blackwell at CNN. We do not do any dialogue with the Valdosta Daily Times. Uh, the reason we're here, you might not, some of you might not know this, the justice movement is considering a, a, maybe a recall of your beloved Sheriff Chris Pride. It's not a move that we want to take. The movement is one of love, justice, and peace. And we say that in all honesty. And that's why we're here to give you respect because we respect that Sheriff Chris Prine is a Democrat. We we're giving you that respect to let you know where we are with the justice movement. And we would like for you to give this family the same respect in return. Now, if you have any questions or, or anything, you know, feel free to, to ask us. Uh, Kenneth Johnson is 229-412-6011. Jacqueline Johnson is 229-699-3314. Now, as far as the petition that we were circulating, the petition was only to ask for a coroner's inquest. We have 30 plus signatures, 18 and over, not saying that all of those are registered voters, but even if we crunch those numbers, at least 15,000 registered voters agreed with us that there needed to be a coroner's inquest as to what happened to Kendrick Johnson. Any other questions, we'll be, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Now, Ms. Jeanette, did you have something you wanted to say? I'll help you. Hi, and I am a supporter of you and your family, and my family as well, and God bless you with the peace. Um, I'm on the board of Southside um, Library for the Booster Club, and I have tickets. Tickets are $10 for adult and 5 for children. Children is 4 and under. I mean, I'm sorry, four and up to 10. So um, we also have the Juneteenth coming up. The, the, um, the dinner's the 18th. And when is the annual? 22nd. The 22nd is the annual that we're going to have right out here. So if you guys want any tickets, I have them right here for you. Or call the Southside Library at your convenience. Thank you. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you. DeMarcus. Oh, DeMarcus Marshall, elected official. He snuck in while I wasn't looking, and then uh, I didn't say anything. DeMarcus Marshall, C County Commissioner, District 4. Good evening. I don't want to take much of the time. I just wanted to make uh, the Democratic Party uh, here in Lowndes County aware of a couple things, a couple numbers for you to remember. Um, Eccles County. 4,171 citizens, Lanier County, 10,765 uh, citizens, Brooks County, 15,753 citizens, Cook, 17,000, Ware County, 36,000, Tifton, 40,000, Coffee, 43,000, 
Lowndes County, 114,000. We are growing. We are not shrinking. Everyone around us is so much, so much smaller than we are. We got to start thinking and functioning as a metropolitan. I said this during my campaign season, and I'm just being honest with you all. Years ago, they did market Lowndes County as a retirement community. However, we're finding it hard to market it as a retirement community and claim to be pro-job because who's going to do the work if you're soliciting a bunch of businesses and a bunch of jobs and you're marketing it as a retirement community? These are things to think about. Currently, we are working on the county's budget. Susan is correct. There are issues with the poll watchers and so forth. Um, a lot of them are getting over 30 hours, which qualifies them for full-time benefits. These are things we got to consider. When I took on being a county commissioner, I did not know we had uh, the realm of responsibility of all the county offices that you all see. I'm going to be honest with you all. This, this, this goes from the sheriff's department, health department, tax assessor's office, clerk of the court, superior court, judge, all of their budgets, we do. Board of elections, yeah. We're working on them these next couple of weeks. Wednesday, we're supposed to meet to chop down some more numbers, meet with some of those constitutional officers and so forth. I just ask that you all be actively in, you know, involved in the process because it's your taxpayer dollars. The lost local option sales tax results should be in sometime this week. Just something to think about. It will weigh heavily on the future of this city for the next 10 years. Another thing to think about, splash, special purpose, local option sales tax will be on the ballot this upcoming year. I really hope you all support it. We need it. I just called out the numbers. We got 114,000 citizens in Lowndes County. Our budget is really hurting. Our general fund